In some of my interactions with the patients in the National Referral Hospital, when I sit down just to have a conversation with them, I want to know, I like to first of all pick, I used to like picking the ones with a rosary around their neck, especially when they did not look like they know anything about the rosary. Like, my God, they don't look like they even have been to church in the last so many years. So I ask about the rosary and they say, oh, I just wear it for protection. And I'm always like, protection from what? And as we get into the conversation, they will say their mother gave them the rosary to wear because of their mental health challenges. They went to, they've been to church, I find out, and they've prayed, 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 and nothing is changing. I ask them then what was going, what they were going through that called for them to have to go to church. And it turns out that yes, they are either hearing voices or they're seeing certain things and they say, oh, but it's because of stress and so on and so forth. These are the things that they have been told or they have had. And we all would like to justify um, a challenge that we, uh, we have or something that we're going through, especially if there's no concrete reason that we are being given. The medical fraternity has its own set of, of reasons why people hear voices and so on and so forth. But I keep saying that we are forgetting a fundamental part of this whole equation. The fact that we are spirit beings having a spiritual experience in a physical body. Where in the whole discussion do the spirits sit? Why do people go to traditional healers? Because they're going to try and take a bad spirit or entity off of you. Why do people go to church? Because the church is going to try and take this spirit of whatever it is, spirit of fear, spirit of death, spirit of confusion, spirit of whatever they call it. They're going to try to take that spirit out of you. And people choose the church first or the traditional healer first because there is an innate knowing that this is not a physical problem. <clears throat> that this that I'm feeling is a spirit-related issue. I feel like I'm under some sort of attack. I feel like there's a spell on me. I feel like my stepmother or whoever is doing something to me. I feel like my colleague who wants my job is doing something to me. What is that thing that they're doing? We say these things, but we never concretize it with the actual thing. We never allow our mind to tell us, we never allow our soul, our own spirit, to tell us which other spirit is involved. Because at that point, now we sound ridiculous. At that point, it can't be it. Being possessed by a spirit we know is, we've seen in movies, we've heard in churches, it's such a horrible thing. Like, like you are in bed with the devil. You have the devil on you. And this is the downside of how this whole spirit thing has been presented. And this is why people are afraid to speak. Because to say that I hear voices, to say that I see things, to say that I feel things, to say that um, some sort of entity made me do it, is to admit that you are under some sort of demonic attack or some possession. Now, I will tell you that yes, you are being controlled by some form of spirit, but you're only being com controlled by that form of spirit because you have allowed them to take charge. As a physical and spirit being, we have sovereignty in this world. In this world, if you have the two, if you're a spirit in a body, if you're a spirit with a body, you have that much more power. That's why the spirits are always trying to possess. They're trying to, they're looking for host bodies because when they are spirit alone, all you can do is see them moving around. Is you can hear them until you allow them to come in and allow them to take charge. Now they have a body to do things with in the physical world. Otherwise, they can only, you can only see them, they can only cause you to have fear. They cannot make you do things. So by allowing them 
to number one, come in, and number two, start to take charge of you here so that you do as your mind says, then is when they have possessed you, when your actions are not your own. Your actions are driven by what they want you to do. A lot of people who are now suffering mental health challenges are in that place. And what we call therapy is that counselor, that therapist, that practitioner trying to speak to the true you to give it back its power, to give you back your power so that you can start saying, wait a minute, I am not these other things. I'm not these other lies that I have fed myself. You are not the one feeding yourself those lies. Those other entities are gaining ground and feeding you these lies so that you think they're your own. And the minute you start to think they're your own, you start to embrace them. You start to think you're afraid of certain things. You start to think that you're not good at certain things. You start to think that you deserve to be punished a certain way. You start to think that you deserve the life that you have because you have done X, Y, Z. Because, oh my God, I had an abortion at some point. I can never be forgiven. After all, the church also says those are some of the sins that can never ever be forgiven. So when you have done something, when you are in a certain state and you're praying and you would feel like, change is not coming. You start thinking of those things like original sin, that because I have original sin, I can never be fully forgiven. So this that I'm struggling with can never really go away completely. So I just need us to understand that there are spirits around us all day, every day, all the time, all the time, because they are here to support us in this experience of this world as spirit beings having a spiritual experience in a physical world and body their spirits feeding into us all the time if you go and see um, on the internet an image for that that depicts consciousness we have a demon and an angel there's a picture of a, a devil or a demon and a picture of a, an angel whispering to us. They're sitting on our shoulders. That's just one. There's tons of them that come to, to give us different, they all have different, um, what are they called? Attributes. They all have different spiritual attributes. They're those that are all about business and all about poverty and all about um, fear of speaking up. They're all they're different attributes. So they sit and all of them are speaking. It's up to you, depending on what you're going through at a given time, you choose which one you want to listen to based on what you're looking for. It's like someone comes and says, um, someone sent me a message the other day. She wanted to get in touch with somebody who she knew was not a good idea getting in touch with. But because she wanted validation of her reason to get in touch with this person, she went to somebody else and asked, well, I'm thinking of getting in touch with this person. This is how I'm feeling. This is what I want to do, and so on and so forth. The person says, no, bad idea. Do not do it. Goes to a third person. They say the same thing to her. Um, she says, so by the time she comes to me, she says, this is what I want to do. I know you think about things differently. Your view on, on life or your outlook on life is different. So I want you to help me understand or help me just process this. Should I talk to this person? These are, these are my reasons. I tell her the same thing. I said, no, do not talk to the person. However, sit with the reason why you want to talk to this person because there is information there that is good for you to know and to understand and she's like what do you mean so i explained to her that there is a voice that is saying talk to this person and another that's saying don't talk to this person now you need to ask okay what do i feel when i think about this person these are my feelings why why would i want to talk to this person listen that entity is going to tell you and then you're like okay so why shouldn't i talk to the person that entity, another entity is going to tell you. And then you're sitting literally in the middle, 
weighing and choosing. So if it finds you at a place where you're low and you feel like you want to call this person and maybe abuse them and tell them off and tell them what you feel and how they made you feel, you're going to choose the voice that tells you you need to stand up to stand up for yourself. You need to let this person know that they cannot just use you and abuse you. They cannot put you down or whatever. And you'll say, yes, I think it's time for me to stand up for myself. But if you're more balanced, you listen to the two. You weigh, this makes sense. Yes, I should stand up for myself. I should let the person know. Then the other voice is saying, yes, you can do that, but not now. You need to be more confident of who you are. You need to be more sure of your position before you can go so that you don't look like a fool. And then you will say, okay, I choose this because it makes sense, because I like what they're saying. So this is what, this is how these entities play in our world, in our lives. So that if you choose, if you make a choice, depending on where you are, of going with a uh, the entity that is giving you negative things, then that is who you become. That is the power that you give them and eventually they can control your existence.